This video is about deriving the likelihood function. We've seen how important the likelihood is. It crops up all the time in machine learning, when we're fitting probability models using maximum likelihood estimation, and when we're applying Bayes' rule. So far, we've gotten by with just looking up likelihood functions on Wikipedia. This has been good enough because our probability models have all been pretty basic, just using simple standard random variables. This video will go through how we find likelihood functions for custom handcrafted random variables, which is what we'll want when we're building cleverer probability models. Typically, the process is something like this. We might start with code here on the bottom left. Then we rewrite it in random variable notation because that's generally easier to do algebra with. Then we do some maths to find the cumulative distribution function. Then differentiate to get the probability density function, i.e. the likelihood function, which is what we need for maximum likelihood estimation of a Bayes rule. This is the typical process when we're dealing with continuous random variables. For discrete random variables, it's typically a bit simpler. Often, it's possible to go straight from the random variable notation to the likelihood function, i.e. the probability mass function. Let's work through some examples. Have a read of this question. We'll follow the standard strategy. We'll write it out in random variable notation. Then, since it's a continuous random variable, we'll find the cumulative distribution function, and then we'll differentiate to get the PDF. Let's get started. Here it is in random variable notation. First, generate a uniform from 0 to 1 random variable. Then, let x be given by this formula here. Next, we want the CDF. My strategy here is to rewrite this probability in terms of simple standard random variables, in this case u, and then to try to use the CDF for u. Here, I've rewritten in terms of u, and now I've re rearranged so that u appears on the left-hand side inside the probability. I know that I can just look up the CDF for u, so I'm trying to get my formula to look like probability that u is less than something. I just look up Wikipedia to remind myself about the CDF for a uniform random variable. And this is the expression we get, just copying down from Wikipedia. The Wikipedia formula has a and b, and in my case, a equals 0 and b equals 1. Also, the value at which I want the CDF is e to the minus lambda x. And the question told me lambda is above 0, so I know this value is in the range 0 to 1, so it's the middle case that I want. And simplify. Finally, differentiate the CDF to get the PDF. This is just plain calculus, and it gives us the answer. Good, we're done. Let's just review the strategy. We had three standard steps, and it was the middle step, finding the CDF, that took all the work. This generally takes some hard work. There's no general recipe, but there are some useful tactics. Most probability models are built up out of simple standard random variables, and so we'll generally try to leverage the CDFs of the simple standard random variables. Here, we wrote our probability in terms of u, a uniform, and we arranged it to put u on the left inside the probability expression so that we could just look up the uniform CDF and apply it. Often, for step two, we'll have to rely on the basic rules of probability, things like independence, the law of total probability, and so on. OK, let's try another example. Have a read. We'll go through the usual three steps. First, write it out in random variable notation. Like the last question, the model here is built from a uniform random variable. Next, since this is a continuous random variable we're working with, we'll work out the CDF for y, the random variable we're interested in. Here, I'm going to split it into three cases depending on the value of little y. 
Remember the CDF for the uniform distribution that we looked up on Wikipedia? That had three cases too. It's quite common to have cases like this for random variables that take values in a limited range. And here, just looking at the code, we can see it's impossible to return a value smaller than zero, and it always returns a value less than or equal to one, and that's why these first two cases are as they are. It's only the last case, the case where little y is in the range zero to one, that we need to do some work. My strategy is to rewrite probability expressions in terms of simple standard random variables. Here, y is defined, defined in terms of x and x is uniform, so let's rewrite in terms of x. I still want to simplify it a bit more to make it look like probability that x is in a set. It's helpful to sketch out a graph of the function x squared and then to ask for what values of x is x squared less than or equal to y. From this sketch we can see that the event we're after is that the event that the random variable big X lies in the range minus root y to plus root y. The next step is just plain Venn diagram stuff. Let's recap. The point of all this algebra is that x is a standard random variable, so I can look up its CDF on Wikipedia. But to use its CDF, I need to have my probability term looking like probability that x is less than or equal to something. And that's why I've been wrangling the probability into this form here. So let's look up Wikipedia. Here's what we get. Pause the video and make sure you can see where these two terms come from. Step three, differentiate the CDF to get the PDF. And be careful here because the CDF has three different cases depending on whether little y is below zero or larger than one or in between. Good, we're done. Now, one final example to check you've got the hang of it. Have a read. I've already taken step one, writing it out in random variable notation. Now, pause the video and see if you can do steps two and three. When you're ready, press play. The only thing that's new in this exercise is how we do step two, finding the CDF. I want to know the probability that big X is less than or equal to little x, and X is generated differently based on the value of K. So I broke down the probability by conditioning on K. This is called the law of total probability, and it crops up a lot when we have this sort of first generate one value and based on that generate a second. And this is the answer that comes out in the end. If you want to check your working, look at the printed notes. And the printed notes also have a few more examples, including discrete random variables. So this is what calculating a likelihood function looks like. We can answer pretty much any machine learning question at all if we can just calculate the likelihood for our probability model. And now with these tools, we're free to be endlessly creative in inventing whatever probability model might fit our real-world dataset.